Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Over the past about a year, we haven't seen many IPOs on the ASX. In fact, the ASX right now is apparently shrinking because not only don't we have companies IPOing, but many companies on the ASX have um, been taken over, particularly the very large cap companies like Newcrest, uh, Sydney Airport, those sort of big cap companies have been taken over and we haven't seen any IPOs. So the ASX is now shrinking, which is the first time apparently in about 18 years. Now, I'm not concerned about that because more than likely, after we go into a significant bull run and a significant bull run is going to happen at some point in the next five years or so, unless we, unless we become Japan now back in the 1990s. And when we do see a significant bull run, we're going to see a lot more IPOs on the ASX. So not concerning about that. But in today's video, I am going to be bringing you a company that did IPO on the ASX uh, about two years ago. Now, I wouldn't have been necessarily following this company because they are a mining company in production, but the share price has taken a massive hit in 2023, particularly because one of their projects has been significantly, when I say significantly, I'm probably under um, stating what's happened, has been significantly impacted by record rainfall. And that company I'll be talking about and featuring today's video is 29 Metals. What exactly does 29 Metals mine for? What element? So all you have to do is go to the periodic table and look at the 29th metal, which happens to be copper. So that's sort of a dead giveaway about the main uh, element they are mining for. However, they could have been called 30 metals because they also mined for zinc. They also mined for silver and gold, which is just below copper. So all in that very small spectrum in that blue area. So copper, zinc, silver, and gold. Now, 29 metals is not to be confused with another company on the ASX called C29 Metals with a TIG code C29. More than likely, this company came out after 29 Metals and they just put the letter C before their names. So I had no idea this company existed. I think I made a slight mistake when I Googled 29 Metals and this is the company that popped up. C29 Metals is an exploring company, copper, gold, and lithium. And more than likely, they just put the lithium there because it's the fad right now on the ASX. Now let's have a look at the history of 29 Metals. This company, and this might be a little bit of a red flag for some investors, came out of, I'm not sure if this is a private equity company, might be just a private investment company, but they came out of EMR Capital back in 2021, listed on the ASX on the 2nd of July. So we are talking about almost a two-year anniversary of this company on the ASX and the share price when they listed, if I remember correctly, it was about $2. I think at one point in time, share price got as high as above $3. One of the largest shareholders of 29 Metals is Australian Super with 11% of the company. Now, sometimes I start preparing videos well in advance. So um, we're talking about potentially a month in advance of when I actually record the video. That is true of 29 Metals. I started preparing this video uh, in the middle of May. And when I was preparing this video, I did put the mark cap in. This was on the 15th of May. And that point in time, the share price was $1.04, which means the market cap of this company was just under $500 million. Now, on the 13th of June, at about 3 p.m., the share price has fallen to $0.70. Cents. The company had a strategy day or strategy review or something like that They did that they did release um, about one week or maybe two weeks after I started looking at this company. And we did see the share price pull back a lot, and in fact, about 30 to 40%. That's why the share price has... Uh, fallen to 70 cents. It has been a little bit lower than that, but we have seen the share price started to consolidate. And at 70 cents, the market cap of this company is 340 million. And of course, the T code, it can't be anything else other than 29M. The managing director and CEO of 29 Metals is Peter Albert. He does have a lot of experience in the mining industry, he says here in his profile, 35 years of experience including 25 years in CEO and executive roles for listed mining companies. And that includes Highfield Resources, HFR. I don't think they're 
on the ASX anymore. Apparently also for the ASX listed Oxiana Limited, later Oz Minerals. He has also had roles with the Shell Billiton Australia, Davy John Brown and jo Johannesburg Consolidated Investments. Now he was appointed as his managing director and CEO. Um, in, in fact, to be appointed the managing director and CEO, he joined EMR Capital as the CEO of EMR Capital's Copper Portfolio in preparation for 29 Metals' initial public offering in 2021. So obviously he was shouted out by EMR Capital people um, as the perfect person for this role. Now let's have a look at some of the projects this company have, and they do have two main projects. Uh, and these two projects are in production. They also have another project in South America, which I haven't looked at at all. Uh, that's called Red Hill in Chile. But the two main projects are in Australia, Golden Grove in West Australia, which is a combination of zinc, copper, silver and gold. I'll talk about that later. You also have Capricorn Copper near, near Mount Isa in Queensland. And that was a project that was significantly affected by rainfall. And that project is mostly copper. I think about 98% copper. In fact, we can confirm it here that uh, Capricorn copper in, is in fact 98% copper and 2% uh, silver. Golden Grove is actually 48% zinc, 37% copper, 11% gold and 5% silver. This is based off their 2022 metal production and sales mix. This could change a little bit in 2023 simply because what's happening at Capricorn, the, the Capricorn copper project. And maybe I should call it a mine instead of a project or possibly even an asset. Now, one of the things I like to do when a company does IPO or has IPO'd on the ASX within the last five years or so is go back and have a look at their prospectus because the prospectus for most companies, if not all companies that IPO is an absolute trove of information. Sometimes it can be as many as 250 pages. Not only will you see a lot of information about the company itself, what they do, but also the sector they're in. And I'll show you a couple of interesting bits of information I found from 29 Metals uh, Prospectus. Now, this first one was just a general uh, look at the 2020 copper producing mines or assets in Australia, and also the size of 29 Metals in terms of copper compared to other companies. So BHP and Glencore, the biggest copper producers, uh, Newcrest comes in at number three, Oz Minerals at number four, and I'm pretty sure Oz Minerals has been taken over by PHP. And then Sandfire Resources coming in number five, 29 Metals coming in number six. So with Oz Minerals being taken over by PHP, uh, Newcrest being taken over by another company, Glencore not listed on the ASX, that means Sandfire Resources is the biggest copper producing, probably the loan, and when I say loan, because BHP is mining for a lot of uh, elements, a lot of uh, commodities, that sort of thing. So it's not a true straight copper play. Sandfire Resources seems to be a true straight copper play. Uh, you could also say maybe 29 Metals is going down that road as well. But 29 Metals is one of the largest copper producing companies of the ASX. You may have been hearing over the past, say, six months or so, that there is going to be an under undersupply of copper within the next five years, particularly because of electrification of the world, and we need a lot of copper. And copper in itself is very useful in many applications. But one of the problems we are having right now is a dearth of copper discoveries. And this was really pointed out within their prospectus. So on the top here, we have copper in major discoveries since 1990, and also the copper exploration budget. So between 1990 and about 2006, we did see a fair few copper discoveries and copper exploration budgets were fairly low. And then we saw copper exploration budgets actually increase while at the same time, the discovery of major copper deposits went down. In fact, they mention here since 2015, despite an average of 1.9 billion US dollars in exploration spending, there has been only two major discoveries, one in West Australia and one in China. And 29 Metals believes current levels of exploration spending are insufficient, even though it's $1.9 billion a year, to meet future demand demonstrated in declining discovery rates and a thinning project pipeline. 
So this is one of the reasons there are many copper bulls out there, even though the copper prices have been falling in the last few months. That's because of sort of a wariness about the states of the economies around the world. And copper sometimes is called Dr. Copper because you can look at the price of copper if it's falling. That's suggesting that the market is concerned about the health of the economies. Health, doctor, get it. And that's what I'm thinking is happening right now. But if we don't go into serious recession and as we're coming out of recession, I think there is a potential boom for copper. Just a potential boom. I, I am always wrong. Lots, lots of times I'm wrong. But I think that's what the market is looking at when they are thinking longer term. Now on to Capricorn coppery recovering plan. This is very important because for the week ending 10th of March 2023, their mind received a significant, a record amount of rain. In fact, in that five-day period, they received over 500 million, 500, 500 millimetres of rain, which was a significant record. In fact, the mean amount of rainfall for March is only 76 millimetres. The previous record was 377. And I did actually see a photo. In fact, when I saw this photo, that uh, sort of picked up my interest in 29 Metals because there was a photo of their mine site and it was just overflowing with water. It just looked like a massive lake or pond, maybe not a pond, yeah, massive lake or so. So they, it is going to take time for them to get back to mining at Capricorn. I'm not sure how long, I haven't really gone that in depth into it, but it is going to take them a fair bit of time. But in saying that, remember, this company has two mining sites that are in production, Golden Grove and Capricorn. And in fact, Golden Grove is the bigger of the two uh, mines because this is just a summary of their production at Golden Grove in 2021 and 2022. And in fact, the EBITDA for both years is well over $100 million and revenue over $400 million. Probably the only concern I can see when I compare 2021 to 2022 was the ore in staining costs and the C1 costs. And we did see a bit of an increase in both of those costs. And that's probably one of the reasons why EBITDA did fall from 2021, which was 161 million to 2000 or well, 110 million in 2022. And if we have a look at the Capricorn copper performance before the flooding, 2021, a revenue of 180 million to up to 286 million in 2022. But in fact, EBITDA fell from 73 million to 66 million. And just like Golden Grove, all in staining costs increased. But for Capricorn, copper increased from 2.8 US dollars per pound up to 3.7. And we also saw C1 cost increase as well. And that's why, even though there was an increase in revenue, EBITDA actually fell for the year. Now let's have a look at the financial performance of 29 Metals, the financial year performance. And this is looking at financial year 22 comparing to financial year 21. And as soon as they come out with their financial year 23 numbers, those uh, revenue, uh, profit, operating cash flow, free cash flow will be significantly lower than financial year 22. But then more than likely, we're going to see a significant increase in financial year 24. So revenue up to $721 million, operating cash flow positive, 156 million, significant increase from last year, well, financial year 21, free cash flow 105 million, and they were not profitable. Uh, loss making by 47.4 million. That would have been some one-off costs more than likely, uh, just because the operating cash flow and free cash flow, not a lot of debt, only $25 million of net debt, but I suppose there might be some concerns that the company would have to do a capra raising because of what's happening with Capricorn uh, Copper. Now to the March quarter results for 29 metals. A few things I'm looking for here, uh, the amount of production, uh, rising or falling, more than likely it's going to be falling, and also the costs. I want to see costs coming down. So let's get on to the production first, and they do list out the copper, zinc, and gold, and silver, and they all fell from the December quarter to the March quarter. Some of them fell a fair bit, but on the plus side, costs are coming down. C1 costs actually rose a little bit, but all in staining costs fell from $4.34 US dollars per pound, maybe because of what's happening with Capricorn uh, copper, uh, to 4.13. The other thing notice, noticeable thing here is they also, also have, been, have included recovery costs. So in last quarter, there was no recovery costs because of what's happening with Capricorn copper. But in this particular quarter, they spent $8.7 million on recovery costs. And that is for the period 1st of March to 31st of March. 
Uh, prior to that, all costs or all Capricorn copper site costs are uh, in the site cost section, which is up just above the C1 cost. And for the quarter, that's at $113 million. Now to the chart for 29 metals. I keep wanting to say Capricorn metals. There's another company called Capricorn Metals, which is gold mining. And it's just that uh, 29 metals have a mine called Capricorn Copper. What's up with Capricorn? Name it something else, please. So anyway, this is the data chart for the company going back to when they listed on the ASX. And there was a bit of excitement about this company from when they listed all the way through to when's that? When was a peak? Share price got up to $3 and about 35 cents in uh, April 2022. And then there was must have been some problems in the middle of 2022 because the share price before the flooding fell from that high of about $3.35 all the way down to about $1.25. Not sure what happened through that or during that period, but something definitely spooked the market. But then there was a sort of a V-shaped recovery in the share price. So maybe it was just short-term sentiment. And then the share price recovered all the way back up $2.70. And about 70 cents. So maybe that uh, first half of 2022 was just the overall negative sentiment in the market because the bottom was reached in July, which is just after the bottom in the overall market. And then since that high, the most recent high, which was in December last year, the share price has fallen all the way from $2.70 down to current share price around 70 cents. And we have seen a fair bit of volume coming in, particularly around that strategic review, which was released um, towards the end of May, we saw the share price drop about 30 to 40 percent in two days, not combined, not not in each day, but combined. And that's why the share price fell from just above one dollar to a low of about 62 and a half cents. Share price has done fairly well since then, so we haven't seen any more significant selling. And I think the value plays, players are coming out and seeing possible some value in this company, particularly because this is not. Um, a structural problem with the company itself. It's just a significant rain event which has disrupted the mining at one of their mines. And if they can, you know, recover that mine site um, well um, without any problems, I think maybe they are right. Maybe there is really good value with this company at these current valuations. And that's all I have for this look, first look at 29 metals. I have started following this company a little bit more just because of the significant depression, suppression maybe, depression, repression, suppression, drop in a share price over the past few months, particularly after that flooding. Uh, and so I'm seeing if there's any value. I'm always nervous about these sort of companies, about mining companies. Uh, but the time, in my opinion, the time to buy mining companies is at the bottom of the cycle or when something significant has happened to the company that was out of the control, that was not a structural problem of the company, and that is the time to think about buying those companies. And now might be the time for 29 Metals, but I'll leave that up to you because at this point in time, I'm not going to be taking a position in this company. I might just wait it out just to see how that recovery of Capricorn Copper plays out. If you have any questions about 29 Metals, uh, any thoughts behind the company itself? Love to hear your opinion. So leave it in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.